Yo, what is up guys, and today uh, I'm going to do my top 10 Star Wars characters of all time. Uh, now before we get into this, sorry it's been a week since I've uploaded. Um, <clears throat> I explained that on my uh, Twitter, uh, which I'll leave down below, uh, channel 419. But anyways, uh, before we get started with this ranking, please make sure to like, subscribe and turn notifications on so you get notified for all my videos when they come out. Um, and then, well fun fact, 55.7% of you are not subscribed, hit that subscribe button right now. But anyways, uh, let's get into this with my honourable mentions which I have in no order by the way the uh, honourable mentions I have Maul, Ahsoka, Grogu, Kylo Ren and Leia don't need to explain them uh, but going to our top 10 we have a controversial one um, get them out of the way first I guess Din Djarin uh, also known as the Mandalorian uh, with these first two seasons, we've already seen some great potential, and I really do enjoy Pedro Pascal's Din Djarin um, a lot. And I think that with maybe three, four more seasons of Mando, maybe six seasons altogether of The Mandalorian, I think Din could become one of the more loved characters of all time. But I think for now, uh, obviously, I see him as a number 10. Uh, people can see him just outside it. I don't really care. Um, but I really enjoyed Din. Um, it's not really much to explain with him. Just top job character, top job storyline, uh, top job sidekick. Alright, let's get to number 9. Coming in at number 9, I have got Qui-Gon Jinn. Now, I chose Qui-Gon for two reasons. One, he's the reason that all of this happened anyways. And two, he's the most unique Jedi I've ever seen. Uh, he doesn't abide by the rules of the traditional Jedi. He just follows the Force and the will of it. He's more unique, which makes him cooler and more... Uh, appealing to the audience. Um, yeah, uh, Liam Neeson did a really good job with him. A um, bit too much screen time in episode one. I think, I don't feel like Qui-Gon should have spent as much time with Anakin. I feel like that should have been Obi-Wan that done that. And Qui-Gon should have been the one that was a bit more hard and rough on him. And Obi-Wan was there just protecting him. He had everything just trying to I don't really know how to explain it, but be like the father, just consensual love, just, I can't really explain it, but Qui-Gon's number nine because of his uniqueness and uh, the fact that he started all this bullshit. So, Qui-Gon Jinn, number nine. Coming in at number eight, I have got Boba Fett. I chose Boba because um, I... Before I really got into Star Wars, I always saw Boba as a badass and I saw him as like a bounty hunter. Like, that was so cool to me when I was a young kid. And that was just really hit me right there in the core. And just, just he's just a badass. You see it in Mando episode 5? Season 2, episode 5? Yeah, season two, episode five. How badass he could be, um, and also his ship makes him unique. I know it kind of Django ship, but Boba was the first one to use it cinematically. Uh, Save one, probably the coolest ship in Star Wars, besides from obviously the iconic Millennium Falcon. Um, and also, I just think he's very underused and underrated. Um, yeah. I think we should see more Boba, and the more Boba I'll see, the more I'll enjoy him. Just cause um, of Tamora Morrison's brilliant performance with Boba, 
as he already knows what it's like to be a fat, as he was Django fat. But yeah, number eight, I've got Boba, and I don't regret it. Next up at number seven, we have our favourite sidekick, Chewbacca. Um, very funny. Um, very consistent as well, which is not some things not a lot of characters have uh, throughout all three trilogies. Very consistent, like three PO. Um, he's definitely more for the kids, as you can see here. He's definitely more for the kids, but um, yeah, I still enjoy him to this day. He's just because I have that, just like with Luke Hard Leia, you have that connection to him. And I have that with Chewie, like the connection that we have, like 40 years of storytelling that, that we've got of Chewbacca. It's just so strong and powerful. And uh, obviously, I think the reaction that I had when I thought Chewie died in episode 9 really hurt until I figured out it was alive. But yeah. I'm glad he didn't die. Uh, Chewie's a very cool character. Uh, unique, definitely. He's a, he's a man. He's a, he's a man covered in fur, for crying out loud. We are blowing. We are belt. If you're wondering, uh, it's a print of a Star Wars uh, comic book cover where Chewie goes rogue against uh, Luke and all that. But, anyways, um, yeah, number seven. Chewbacca. And come in, number six, we have our mysterious character of the century, Master Yoda. Now, Master Yoda, I think the, the mystery makes him who he is. If he weren't mysterious, he wouldn't be Yoda. He wouldn't be that green, like, just, he wouldn't be Palpatine's little green friend. And he just wouldn't be the same if we knew everything about him uh, which I think the secrecy of Yoda is the most appealing aspect of him because us introverted people like myself uh, really want to keep stuff private and not tell a lot of people and Yoda kind of resonates with me on that one uh, I feel like I have Yoda a lot more higher than most people would just because of how relatable he is to me Especially someone who's an introvert. Uh, just. Yeah, I can't really explain anything else besides from that, but yeah, Yoda. Number six. Thank you. Coming in at number five, we have got Luke Skywalker. Um, if you haven't seen the season two finale, uh, spoiler warning in five, four, three, two, one. Um, Luke returning that made me cry a whole lot. A bit like Star Wars, how Star Wars Fury did. I just couldn't control it. Uh, but yeah, Luke returning in that. Uh, finally getting the use that he needs and deserves. Um, obviously, Luke in the original trilogy. Uh, we've known him the longest out of all the characters. So, obviously, we will feel more towards him and his actions. Um... Yeah, uh, we see Luke transform from a whiny kid to, like, from episode 4 to episode 6, we see him as a grown man, a Jedi Knight, about to uh, face against his father and the Emperor, matured, because of the progress that he's had meeting people like Obi-Wan, Yoda, Han, Leia, Chewie, like these headliners, all as Carrie Fisher would call them, legacy players of Star Wars, made him mature and made Luke oh fucking p. <laughs> and then obviously, uh, it's my opinion. This next bit, I don't see the sequels as canon. I just see them as all. It's kind of like a multiverse thing. But Luke is Episode Eight, not Luke. And you'll see what I mean. Um, I'll explain it at the end of the video, but uh, Luke coming in at number five. If he gets a lot more use out of Disney, if Disney use him right, 
we see Luke in between episode six and seven doing what he really does best. Then I think Luke could become something really great. Not say he already is, but I think he could be Darth Vader level iconic. Coming in at number four, we have got Han Solo. Now, Han Solo, when I first saw the films, was like the cool kid at school that everyone wanted to be around. Um, just, he's just a cool ass guy. Harrison Ford played him perfectly. You, there's no one else who could play Han as good as him. I know he had a Alden, I can't remember his name, but Ironreich or something. He did a good job, but nothing compared to Harrison, man. Um, obviously, Han's arc for the original trilogy was going from selfish to selfless after meeting people like Luke, Leia, and yeah, just meeting Luke, Leia, people who he wants to be around, uh, just getting the emotions that humans should, uh, having having not just self-care but care for others and that what makes Han a great leader is that he'll put himself on the line for everyone else to be free and we've seen that um, in episode 5 it might be a bit of a lame example but when Han went out to go and get Luke he knew that Luke could would be the equaliser against the Empire and he knew, for the freedom's freedom's sake, he had to get Luke, but also his like his brother. Well, step not step brother, brother in law. Uh, just Hard's arc through the whole three trilogies, and then his tragic death in Episode Seven really captivates that whole arc. Um, obviously, like I said Episode Seven isn't canon. Well, the sequel trilogy isn't canon to me. But that death scene, I feel like that would be something Han would do. He would probably die at the hands of his son to save the galaxy. And that's who Han is to me. He's someone who was a selfless, selfish scoundrel to a selfless general and leader. And that's how I see Han, and that's why he's coming in at number four. Coming in at number three is the most sadistic son of a bitch of all time. And that is Emperor Palpatine. Um, just the way that Ian McDermott moves Palpatine and the presence of Palpatine is just so... It's a punch to the gut to anyone who knows it. And obviously the arc of Palpatine, just politician, yeah, maybe a bit lame, he's politician, but Spartacus in there, and you'll figure out is that he's controlling both sides of the war. He's pit the galaxy against itself. It's a bit like a Hitler move. He's pitting everyone against themselves. But he's going to come up and rise and say he can saw it all. And then these will bind together some aspects of it. The Sith side of the Separatists. And the politician side of the Republic. Will join together. And become the Galactic Empire. And the plan that Palpatine had in the prequels, top notch. Uh, for episode one, it didn't look that great. Uh, we knew that uh, his name was Palpatine in episode six. Then we saw Palpatine in episode one, we were like, huh? Palpatine, episode six, the biggest bad guy of all time. Palpatine, episode one, a politician. <laughs> But, through the prequels, you see that transformation of politician to manipulator to megalomaniac Sith Lord. In the first six films, he's in every one of them except for episode four, which I don't think he needs to be in. Even though I've seen some arguments saying he should be. Uh, he doesn't need to be in them. Um, yeah, poverty number three because of the sadistic son of a bitch he is and how he manipulated the whole galaxy to go against itself and then he took the pieces and made his empire now coming in at number two we have Obi-Wan Kenobi as uh, see guess who's lightsaber this is 
Luke's all up once. What, sorry? Luke's all up once. Who is it? <laughs> um, Ewan McGregor's Obi Wan. Uh, I'm going to be more specific here. Um, I'm joking, it's all the Obi Wan. Um, just that arc, episode one, we see him as a part of one, trained under Qui Gon Jinn. Episode two, we see him training Anakin. Episode one, I don't think it's really a Star Wars film. I know Sean Chandler's done something about this sort of thing. Like episode one isn't really a Star Wars film, and I agree with him with it. Episode two, we see Obi Wan as a Jedi Knight training a part of one Anakin Skywalker, ten years after episode one. Uh, episode 3, I think it's peak Obi-Wan for the whole thing. Not to say that the Obi-Wan's in episode 1 and 2 were bad. It's just they weren't utilised properly. In episode 3, it went like this. Episode 1, episode 2, episode 3. It just went fucking skyrocketing. Uh, Ewan McGregor is probably one of the best performers in the Star Wars trilogy. Uh, he definitely brought the most out of the Obi-Wan character. Uh, he made him a meme with, hello there. And just some of his iconic phrases and some of his iconic quirks with the uh, smirk and stuff. Um, yeah, it's it's always a toss up in it. Like it's always Obi Wan or Vader. Which one do you prefer? Because they're the two OGs and they're the two most iconic. And I put Obi Wan number two. Do you want to see who's number one? Let's find out. And coming in at number one. I've got Vader slash Anakin. I know there's going to be people saying, oh, but they're not the same person. The fucking are. If you have the Vader arc and the Anakin arc by itself, it don't really feel right. You have to have them together to make it one full arc. Sorry about that. Um, anyways, uh, the Vader arc from episode 1 to 6. Uh, episode 1, bit clunky. Episode 2, bit less clunky. Episode 3 to episode 6 is where it fully comes into stride. We see Anakin being manipulated with the risk of his wife dying always being an aspect. Um, episode 4, well, episode 3 still. Anakin turns into Vader because of Obi-Wan's actions. Uh, we'll see more of Vader's like, turmoil in between episode 3 and 4. Uh, can't wait for that. Episode 4. See Vader, a full Sith Lord, fully indulged in the dark side, more powerful than Obi Wan now, which is a big thing. Episode five, we see him realize that Luke's his son. We see him beat his son, which shows he's more powerful than Luke. Episode six, we see him beat the Emperor by chucking him off a shaft, which doesn't matter anymore apparently, and risk his life for the galaxy and his son. Uh, Vader, most iconic character, the best character in Star Wars, and that's the truth, that's the fact, that's my opinion, suck on that. But, um, as always, it's an opinion, share yours down below, uh, your top five Star Wars characters down below, and yeah. Anyway guys, uh, that's the end of the video, uh, just before we go, uh, just before you go, I wanted to share a couple of things with you. Uh, the first thing is that I'm going to be doing a legacy mode on Fight Night Champion, which is basically you create your own character and go for a career with it. Second thing, uh, I'm doing a I'm rewriting the Last Jedi. Uh, I'm on the third draft. Uh, I am just finished Act One. Um, I showed some of my friends, and they think it's really good. Uh, I can't wait to see what you all think. Uh, I might just bring out Act One this Saturday. Uh, obviously. January 30th, we have the chase, uh, where I'll be the chaser. We'll have Chris uh, or the real review 3000 as uh, the host. And then we're going to have uh, two teams uh, one which could be led by Onzo or Big Afford Entertainment, and the other one by LDG Pixels slash Geeks and Joy Nerd Rodica. Uh, but uh, it's going to be a bit of a busy week this week. Uh, I'm really trying to push some po projects because. YouTube's a bit J sided for me right now. I just wanted to push a couple of projects uh, in my spare time, uh, some of my non projects that you don't know about. And yeah. But, anyways, guys, uh, thank you for watching the video. Please make sure to like, share, subscribe, and as always, stay interested, stay funky, and remember the force will be with you always.